Hey everyone, I wanted to make a quick video about the Lost Pack event in Deep Rock Galactic. Along with the Miner's Handbook and UI changes in the most recent update, there is a new event that unlocks paint jobs for armor sets and accessories for pickaxes. I will briefly cover a few mechanics surrounding the new Lost Pack event, and then talk about the best methods that I've found for farming it. The Lost Pack event can be triggered once you stumble upon an abandoned helmet within a dive. Once you or a party member interacts with the helmet, your map will be updated, displaying a pink node somewhere in the cave system. Digging through the terrain at this location will reveal a small pocket containing minerals and a lost pack. After interacting with the pack, a new armor paint job or pickaxe customization will be added to your collection. While this is a simple and fun new addition to the game, the helmets can prove to be a little elusive. I've seen a number of common questions regarding the new event, so here are a few things to keep in mind while searching the caves. Like machine events and cargo crates, the helmet can spawn on any hazard, and is not dependent on difficulty. Similarly, the Lost Pack event can spawn on any normal mission, of any type, but cannot spawn on elite or regular deep dives. Like the cargo crate, the likelihood of the event spawning is related to the mission link modifier when choosing a dive to play. This means that the shorter missions will have less chance for the helmet to spawn, while Link 3 missions will give you the greatest chance. Machine events, cargo crates, and the lost pack events are all rolled separately, so it's possible to get two or even all three in the same cave. The terrain for the pocket and the pack itself is generated once the helmet has been interacted with. This means that no amount of searching with the terrain scanner will reveal the lost pack without having interacted with the helmet first. You will never receive duplicate accessories. The unlock you receive is determined by whoever first interacts with the lost pack, but if you already have that unlock, you will roll a new one for yourself. Lastly, the accessory from the event is permanently unlocked after interacting with the lost pack. If you fail or abandon the mission after interacting with it, you will keep your reward. With that in mind, let's look at some of the best ways to find the helmet. The object itself is rather small and can easily be lost or hidden behind terrain. Its dull color profile also means that it can easily blend in with rubble, slag, and darker terrain. But there are a few things that will help you locate the helmet despite the challenge. Before being activated, the helmet makes a distinct beeping sound. This sound is the exact same sound as the battery for the cargo crate, except that the helmet beeps at a much slower rate. You have to be relatively close to the helmet to hear the sound, even faintly. From 15 meters away, you can begin picking up the quiet effect, but that may vary depending on your audio. If you are seriously searching for lost packs for a time, I suggest using headphones and turning down the game music. Before interacting with it, the helmet will periodically emit a yellow glow. The visor on the helmet will slowly pulse from dark to bright, giving off a short dim radius of light surrounding the object. This can be seen from great distances, as long as you have a clear view of the helmet, and can be one of the best ways to locate the object in large open caves. This effect is much harder to notice in a well-lit cave, so take a moment to glance around the dark before lighting up an area. The last sign of a nearby helmet is a subtle one. Scattered among the rubble and debris of any typical cave floor, you may come across derelict pieces of armor or gear. These are dull in appearance and even smaller than the helmet itself but can often be found before seeing a helmet if you keep your eyes on the floor. This breadcrumb trail will help you know when you are in the vicinity of a helmet at a greater range in narrow or complicated caves. They can spawn as far away as 25 meters, so if you come across some, know that the helmet is close. These things will be helpful to know as you play the game, and a good method to unlocking the packs is to just work on assignments you would normally be doing. Just note that many assignment missions will not be maximum mission length, so you won't have the highest chance to spawn the lost pack event. If you are looking to specifically farm the event for accessories, I have a few suggestions. Depending on the way you play the game, there are a number of different ways to approach it. Typically, Morkite missions are linear for the most part, meaning that it is easier to naturally be thorough in your exploration of the cave. This is the mission type where you are least likely to miss a helmet by accident. Just know that the maximum length mining missions can be time consuming, and will often require you to search the cave to the end to be certain you haven't missed the helmet. Acork missions usually have one large open cave with a couple side rooms. This is the mission type I would recommend, as the 10 Acork objective for Link 3 can be completed solo or with a group very quickly. 
This is also a good chance to work on the Lone Wolf achievement for playing 100 solo missions with Bosco, complete Dystrom secondary missions for perk milestones, or an opportunity to use up any blank cores you may have on machine events you will find. I will now go over my method for farming lost packs. The strategy I use for farming requires abandoning every mission to save a great deal of time. If this is something you don't agree with, or you would prefer completing missions for rewards, I would encourage you to play the game modes that I mentioned previously. The method can also be adapted to complete every mission, but will add a significant amount of time to every dive. The objective is to go into a mission with the highest odds of having a pack, traverse the entire cave quickly while searching for the helmet, and then abandon the mission. If I come across a helmet, I will activate it, find the pack, claim it, and then abandon the mission. Scout is the obvious choice here because of the speed and ease at which the class can traverse caves. The flares are also extremely helpful for locating the helmet or nearby armored debris. Special Powder and the Hover Clock are nice here for traversal, but are not essential. Other classes can be played instead, but will be slower and have less visibility. Choosing Has Won, since difficulty does not affect the chance of the event, the goal is to just quickly search and leave. This method is from the perspective of solo play, but if you have someone who would like to farm with you and is okay with abandoning, you can clear caves extremely quickly. I choose to run only Link 3, 10A Quirk missions, because there is no dirt and the caves are large and open. I will also avoid playing on magma caverns and dense biozone, as it is easy for the helmet to blend into both the terrain and ambient lighting effects, making it very easy to overlook. After starting a mission, I will flare the drop pod area and grapple to any nearby ledge. While the drop pod is leaving and the mine head is landing, I will take this time to get a feel for the layout of a cave, and sweep around the dark for the pulsing effect in the distance. After, I will choose a direction, left or right, and go that way for the rest of the mission. I do this so I don't fill the terrain scanner with area that I haven't actually explored. Try to explore the map one level at a time. It will be more thorough if you stay at the same height for one pass of the main cave, and then switch to a higher or lower level. Once I have completed a pass around the main cave, I will explore the area around the mine head. I have had the helmet spawn surprisingly close to it a few times. If I come across a path to another room, I will branch off and explore it while making passes around the main cave, just being sure to return to where I was when I'm done searching. I check the terrain scanner regularly as I am jumping to new sections, and occasionally stop to pan the main room from a different angle to see if I can spot the blinking effect in the distance. When exploring a section, I will light up the area well and sweep the floor for pieces of gear before leaving. Once I have explored what seems to be all of the cave, I will stop and look closely at the scanner for any areas I may have left unexplored. If the map is incomplete, I will jump to sections I have missed. This is why it's important to only move to areas you are actively searching in. At the end of the mission, the scanner will be the only way to know where you've missed. Once it has been completed, I will do a final pan around and then abandon. Typically, I will do any cargo crates and machine events I find while farming. If I find a helmet early into the mission, I will activate it and then go retrieve the lost pack. Afterwards, I will either abandon or quickly glance around for a possible cargo crate. A route like this can be completed within a matter of minutes. I usually abandon an unsuccessful attempt around or just before the first wave spawns. They can take a few minutes longer if you are stopping to do cargo crates or machine events. The speed is both a good and bad thing, as it means you can get a few attempts at the same mission before it rolls over to a new set on the mission selection terminal. So, depending on the biome, it may be very easy or very difficult to find the helmet. This wraps up everything I have on the Lost Pack event. I wanted to get something out there for people because I know it can be troubling to find. If you know of any other tips involving the Lost Packs or strategies that work for you, definitely let me know. Thanks for watching.